Hello everybody, it's Dr. Galvin with another update on the coronavirus. Actually, today's not so much an update as much as uh, maybe a little how-to guide to maybe prevent getting COVID. You know, numbers are exploding. We're starting to see a logarithmic growth of cases, of hospitalizations, and you know, unfortunately of deaths. And so really what we want to do, if possible, is avoid getting COVID, right? And we know it's a respiratory virus and there are things we've talked about um, all the time about masks and distancing and things like that. But are there some supplements that we might be able to use? So this video is basically, I'm going to cover five supplements that have some reasonable scientific evidence that they may help either prevent you from coming down with um, COVID or if you get it to maybe moderate the symptoms and have a much minor, much more minor course. Now, the first supplement we're going to talk about is vitamin C, and vitamin C is critical to all immune cell function. It's an antioxidant and it, it enhances immune um, response. And in terms of respiratory viruses, there have been studies that show that vitamin C supplementation reduces your risk of coming down with a common cold. And remember, about 50% of colds are actually caused by coronaviruses, not the virus that causes COVID, but uh, uh, viruses that are in the similar family. So, you know, it's not a huge intellectual leap to think that things that suppress other coronaviruses may suppress this one as well. Also, in patients that actually have severe sepsis and ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome from COVID, vitamin C, there's some preliminary studies that show that that vitamin C actually can reduce their mortality and improve uh, outcomes. So that's good. Um, the second thing we're going to talk about is zinc. Um, zinc is an element um, and it's important. Um, and it turns out that about 30% of Americans are actually deficient in zinc. And it's really essential for the development of immune cells. And those are those cells that are going to come in and fight an infection if we happen to get sick, including COVID. Um, also, there's been studies that show that zinc actually reduces the risk of developing or catching viral infections. Um, also, there's other studies that show it, it actually reduces the duration of colds. Um, and so zinc is important. Now, there's a little rub to zinc. Um, it, zinc has been shown to have this antiviral um, activity, but it's a little hard to get zinc into the cells. It doesn't want to just naturally go in and into the cell. And if you take zinc alone, you're probably going to end up excreting most of it. Um, however, number three is quercetin. And quercetin is a supplement that acts as an ionophore. And an ionophore is any substance that, that kind of helps another substance transmit through the cell membrane and get into the cell. In this case, I don't know if it can, uh, this quercetin can actually pick up the, the zinc and pull it into the cell and where it can have those positive effects we just talked about, which is good news, right? But also quercetin by itself has been shown to be an antiviral and actually may bind to the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. And it's that spike protein that all the vaccine manufacturers are, are targeting because that spike is what attaches to the cell and allows the cell to get infected. So if you cover it up with something like an antibody or a vaccine or maybe a quercetin, it, it's harder for the cell to get in, or the virus rather, to infect cells. So that combination of zinc and quercetin is important. Number four is melatonin. Now melatonin is important in terms of setting sleep cycles um, and also is an anxiolytic effect. And we're all a little bit of, and we're all probably a little bit anxious with all that's going on with COVID. Um, but also it's a pretty potent anti-inflammatory and anti antioxidant. Um, it also decreases inflammation in the lungs um, and diminishes fibrosis in the lungs. And, and, and that's important because those are things that people that have active cases of COVID are dealing with. Also, you know, the sleep effects, we use, we use melatonin with our patients all the time because, you know, if you're well rested, your immune system is boosted. So melatonin also has that effect of improving sleep. And if you're, you're better rested, you're going to be more prone to be able to fight off viral infections. And number five, which I think is probably the most important, is vitamin D. In particular, you know, um, uh, we look at vitamin D in terms of where you live. And so those of us that live in the southern half of the U.S. and in North Carolina have a little bit higher levels of vitamin D typically than those who live above, like where I'm from in Syracuse. Um, you know, the winter's probably already locked in there, right? Not a lot of sun in Syracuse. Vitamin level, vitamin D levels are, are lower. There's actually been some studies that show that virus um, infectivity and severity is worse in the northern states and in the southern states, and we think it has to do with vitamin D. We also know that there are... are, are 
probably five or 10 studies have come out that have linked low vitamin D levels with either increased risk of getting COVID or um, worsening, uh, worsening symptoms. And there's one study in particular that showed that something like 87% of admitted patients had low vitamin D levels. Now, importantly, we really don't make much vitamin D from the sun from about now until about April. And so we really, supplementing vitamin D is really important. I think, you know, 2,000 to 5,000 units a day. You should probably get your levels checked though. I generally tell our patients we want you between about 70 and 90. That, that I think provides the ultimate amount of protection. Um, you know, vitamin D levels are low um, typically in some of the higher risk populations. So people with diabetes, people with obesity tend to have lower vitamin D levels and subsequently are more prone to the bad effects of the virus. You know, if you're gonna, if, you know, with the amount of virus that's out there, the likelihood of any of us getting it is pretty high at this point, because it's just around there. I mean, it's, it's so prevalent. So that being said, obviously I want you not to get it. But if you have to get it, we want to stack the deck in our favor. We really would rather be one of those people that gets an either an asymptomatic case or a minimally symptomatic case. And vitamin D, I think, can really help. So those are the five, my five recommendations. Vitamin C, zinc, quercetin, melatonin, and vitamin D. Now, I actually have a sheet um, or a little handout with this that we give to our patients. If it's something that you're in, interested in, you can email us at info at vitalitymwi.com. And when my staff comes back to the office next week, we'll get it out to you. Um, and it just kind of goes over what we've, uh, what we've talked about today. Again, best thing is to not get it. How does it. What's the best way to not get it? Wash your hands, wear a mask. We know now it both protects us from other people and protects other people from us. Um, social distance, do all the things we've been telling. Those are really the only things that really we know work to prevent you getting infected. Everybody stay safe. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Galvin. If you like this, follow us on Facebook and, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, and uh, in case I didn't tell you before, I'm actually uh, I don't only play a doctor on TV, I'm actually a real doctor. I'm an emergency medicine physician. I've been dealing with the virus since it started. As usual, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, look out for everybody else. I'll be back next week with more. Have a great weekend.